Welcome back to Biomes. I kind of forgot that I was actually making this series, so this time we're talking about the Mariana Trench. So the Mariana Trench is the deepest point um, on Earth. It's the, it's the deepest, farthest down you can possibly go. It is located in, bleh, located in the Pacific Ocean around like Japan, Taiwan, Philippines. You, you, can, you can see on the map, but that's where it is. It has a max depth of about 35,000 feet or 11 kilometers and has a pressure of around, of over actually, 15,000 psi. So it is a very hostile <laughs> environment to say the least. So you might be thinking, well, obviously nothing lives in there because it kind of sucks shit. Wrong. So the bottom of the Marianne Trench. My roommate's making sounds. Um, you know, the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Um, no light can reach there. Like, there's no wavelengths of visible light that can physically reach that deep. So there is no possible way for photosynthesis to occur. So that means there are no plants there at all. However, what we see here is called a hydrothermal vent, and it is basically a vent coming up from the inside of the Earth that releases all of its heat and energy and stuff. And it is very hot, but it is actually a very good thing for that because that allows life to be there. So instead of the start of the food, ch food chain being energy and light from the sun is actually energy from the Earth. So as the Earth releases all this heat and chemical energy, it actually sustains a bunch of different types of bacteria, which are known as um, chemoautotrophic bacteria, which makes means they make their energy from, instead of light from the sun, they use chemicals and heat from the Earth. So chemo, chemical, auto, self, trophic, make. So ma ma makes their own energy from heat and chemical heat and chemicals fuck me and so using these hydrothermal vents with the bacteria as a starting point it can actually start the entire food chain which is sustained through like out the mariana trench and so there are some pretty interestingly adapted animals that are able to survive here so 15000 psi is not very friendly to bones um, bones don't do good at that pressure, so a lot of the animals in the Mariana Trench are invertebrates, such as this sea cucumber. They tend to live at the bottom, like, all, all of the invertebrates tend to live way, way lower than any vertebrate animals because they don't have bones, and so they can withstand the pressure a lot better. Other invertebrates include our friend the Dumbo octopus, which are absolutely adorable. I love them as well as our comb jellies. So these are not actually jellyfish, they are in a different phylum. These are in the phylum Tenophora instead of Nidaria like jellyfish, so they may look like jellyfish, but they are not, actu a not actually. They're a different type of animal, and they do not have the stinging cells that the jellyfish have. They instead have bioluminescent cells, so they're all nice and glowy, and they look very pretty. Another very interesting organism, this, this is an animal, it's not some weird alien, this is the ping pong tree sponge. So this is a type of sea sponge, and it's very interesting because it is carnivorous, and active, not actively hunts, but it has these little like cells on the ping pong parts that actually actively trap prey instead of just filter feeding like most regular sponges do, which is very interesting, and they also look super weird. This is a relatively newly discovered species, a, it is Eurythenes plasticus. I'm pretty sure this is a type of crustacean, and it is named as such the plasticus part because microplastics were found in it. It was discovered around 2020, and samples already had fucking microplastics in them, so don't litter. Keep our oceans clean, because if it can be found at the bottom of the fucking Mariana Trench, that is not a good thing, but this is a pretty interesting little guy. New discovery, and it's super cool. 
This is the Osidax worm, also known as the zombie worm, and these play a very important role in nutrient cycling in the ecosystem because they decompose the bones of whales and other large vertebrates that fall down to the bottom of the trench when they die. So a whale dies and it falls all the way down to the bottom of the trench where these guys burrow into the bones and eat the marrow and fats that are inside, thus recycling their nutrients into the food chain where other organisms can get at them because they may not be able to get at the bones in themselves. Now, while most of the animals in the Mariana Trench are invertebrates because that's a bit friendlier to them, there are vertebrates such as this snailfish, which has recently broken the record for the deepest going vertebrate. Um, so they have been found deeper than any other vertebrate in the world. So everyone give a big round of applause to our friend, the snailfish. This is the viper fish, which I have a special like for because I freaked my grandmother out when I identified it when she was watching Jeopardy when I was like eight. Like many of the organisms in the Mariana Trench and as well as other deep sea areas, they are bioluminescent, which means they create their own light. They use that for communication as well as like luring their prey in when they want to eat it. This is the barrel eye fish, and yes, it is a real fish. That its head is clear, you can see its eyeballs and the inside of it. I think that's it's got its brain in there. I don't know why they did that. Maybe it's to allow more light to hit the eyeballs so it can see better, but it looks pretty freaky and I like it. There are multiple species of angler fish found in the Mariana Trench. Um, they're also not as big as most people think. They're a pretty small fish. Like, the Mariana Trench is not very friendly to large animals, therefore there's no megalodons hiding in the Mariana Trench. It doesn't work like that. They're too big and they have too many bones. Anyway, that's another thing, but there's lots of anglerfish. They, they're famous for using their bioluminescent lure to lure their prey in, where they... Yeah. Here we have the hatchet fish, which is not actually missing half of its body. That's just how it's built. She's built different. And to quite a few species of hatchet fish, they all look vaguely fucked up, and I am a big fan of them. And there are even a few of the larger types of fish, such as the frilled shark, which was recently re- or not recently, but so, vaguely recently rediscovered after it was thought to be extinct. It is not extinct and it wasn't like super recent, but yeah, these guys are super weird. They have weird teeth, they have weird gills, and I like them. And finally, our goblin shark with the nose and with the freaky jaws. I like them too. They also live in the more upper areas of the- can we not be doing that? more upper areas of the Mariana Trench, and I like them as well. So yeah, there's still a quite a lot that we don't know about the Mariana Trench because it is very difficult and expensive to explore, but if there's some more billionaires with some chump change and free time, I think we can make it work.